today we're going to talk about water. Uh, I did a video a while ago and I've gotten some questions on uh, how I treat my water and why I do the way I do. Now I've changed a lot since that last video. Alright, so the first question, what is better, hard or soft water? Personally, I don't think it matters, obviously for keeping fish. Uh, if I was just keeping fish, I would keep my fish in tap water. Uh, the only reason I use soft water is to breed certain species, uh, mostly Amazonian, especially the wild fish. Uh, I want to get that pH down. When I talk about hard and soft water, most hard water has a higher pH. Now there are some places in the country where that pH comes out neutral. Mine comes out at 7, 8 during the spring, and then in the winter time it's 8.2. That's because in the spring we are on a wet, or on a, well, we're on a spring. <laughs> So we're on a spring in the spring and then in the winter time we actually go to city water so we actually get our water from a local city. How do I personally treat my water? I do treat all my water. Um, just, just to make everything clear, I've gone to a new system where all my tap water is, is filtered through a sediment filter and then 5 micron and then a carbon filter and then a chloramine filter. Now, if I don't have chloramines, why would I put a chloramine filter in my filtration system? Uh, just because in the past, uh, in the 90s when I had my discus room, I actually lost a lot of discus because this uh, city put in chloramines just one day without, just randomly, and I wasn't treating for the water. Everything was on auto systems, and it went through my carbon filter and it wasn't strong enough to break down those chloramines. So now what I do is my tap water goes through those three, right? And then it splits off into my RO system and then it goes through those three again and then it goes through a double RO system. Now that sounds extreme, I know, but when you've lost $10,000 in fish, you kind of go the extra mile uh, because it's just cheaper and easier to do that and also to restart a room sometimes it's just not worth it So it's a good reason why most people get out of that hobby because of high deaths and it's usually caused by the water so the one thing is um, I run all so on my tap water I run everything to barrels and I do age my water now I guess there's a debate on aging water. To me, it's not really a debate because I think of water like going through a stream and activate and where it's activated through a stream. And that's kind of my thought process with tap water. So the tap water, I do put an air stone in because I'm not worried about raising pH or anything like that. And basically what I'm wanting to do is uh, get that water activated, circulation. And really what that does is it, just in case the filters didn't take care of any chlorines or anything like that, the aeration will um, gas off any chlorines. But then what I do is I go an extra mile on my tap water, and so the filter system, the aging, and then I do dechlorinate my water. Now you're asking, that seems like a lot, but here's the thing, when I'm selling my fish to stores, most people are just using dechlorinator. So I want my fish to be used to the dechlorination process as far as the chemical that is used. Because I don't want to sell my fish and then they're not used to that uh, dechlorinator in their water and they just flip over on me. Uh, and one thing I do is I make my own dechlorinators. I do not use over-the-counter dechlorinators. I've been doing it for two years and uh, I treat all my young fry, everything with those dechlorinators and never had an issue. And um, as far as cost, it's significantly less than what you pay for uh, over-the-counter stuff. So that's something I will be selling on my website and uh, at a considerable discount. Now the soft water, I do not treat. I do not treat the soft water because I've gone through those six filters and then I've gone through that RO system. So and I change those filters out every six month months. No questions asked. I don't care if they're ready or not it doesn't matter because what i have found is if i let those go for a year uh, my fish that breed in the soft water do not tend to breed anymore uh, something's getting through that whether it's a fluoride or something's getting into the, that water but as soon as i put the new filters in everything starts spawning again and i have way better production so for me the 50 dollars to redo all those filters uh, twice a year is way worth it so that's not even a question. So the soft water I do not treat, I do not aerate, and I do not heat. Uh, the only reason I would heat the tap water 
is like if I'm doing 80% on my discus fry uh, that are small, because I'm feeding so much food, I gotta do big water changes. So that'd be the only reason I'd heat my water. And uh, right now I have the, the discus in there. So I am heating the water because of huge water changes. Soft water is a tool. So I just think that it's used in a certain way, but I really would never just use soft water to keep fish. I would use my tap water and just make sure it's either well filtered or well dechlorinated or aged. So do I remineralize my water? No, I don't. Basically what I do is I make sure the minerals and everything they need are in their food. Does that add minerals to the water? Yes, but that's not the point. The point is to get those minerals into the fish. So I'm not really concerned about the water as far as minerals and stuff like that. So I just use straight RO. Now, one thing about using straight RO is you can get a pH crash. So there was a time when I wasn't quite sure and I was testing the RO water and what was happening. And I noticed in one afternoon, sometimes it'd go from a 6.5 to a five, right? And uh, that made me do a lot more research. And basically what's happening is the food you're putting in is basically dropping that pH over time, right? So if you wanna raise the pH, you add more aeration, you drop the aeration if you wanna drop the pH, but really that food sitting in the tank basically drops that pH. So basically that's all I do is I just use RO water and then I just buffer it with crushed coral. Um, and I've never had anything go below six. And to breed discus, we're trying to get around that six, five. That's kind of perfect. Um, and as the fry hatch, I just, I just start pumping uh, good RO water in there. And then at 14 days, they go into tap water. So nothing goes into my water. I don't try to manipulate it anymore. I don't try to add calcium or magnesium. I don't do any of that because what I was finding was my everything was kind of going out of whack, right? Because I'm, I'm trying to do stuff that's supposed to happen naturally. So as the water goes in neutral, it's easy to drop it to a 6.6 six real quick, right? Just by feeding your fish. Now, if it goes to six, that's okay, right? But if it starts getting in that five range, basically that's where the crushed coral kicks in. They, it just starts throwing out, it basically dissolves that coral and that adds a buffer to the water. So it's just kind of a backup. But that's the thing is, if you, you'll notice my bags when I start are full and then over about a year they drop and then you can see they're about a quarter full after about a year. So I know I gotta refill those bags every year and it's just very simple for me because I, it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. And I put those bags where I can see them. And really what those bags are too is they let me know, oh, that's a soft water tank, right? So it's just simple for me to see that and say, oh, that's a soft water, that's a hard water because there's no bag in there. So that's kind of my stance with RO water is just using straight RO water with uh, crushed coral for as a buffer. And it just simplified everything for me and I can manipulate that pH by adding more food and that throws minerals. So it's basically that, tr that trio of RO water, crushed coral, food. That's the triangle and that gets everything in line as far as not worrying about pH crash, but also letting that pH naturally drop and then rise by itself. So this is my overview on the water. I'm sure there's a lot more questions. If you have questions, just ask me in the comments. I've learned a lot about water, okay? And here's the thing, is I, I make these videos and I try to answer the questions the best I can, but I'm not perfect. And I haven't made a lot of videos really. In the last year, I've only made five or six maybe. And I don't, I don't always answer the questions correctly as far as asking the question and then answering it. So. The thing is, is I want you guys to understand that I, I'm doing my best as far as these videos, right? So if you have any questions and I, I didn't do the video perfect in your eyes, just ask me the question and I will answer it for you, right? Or I'll do the best I can or give you my opinion on it. Uh, but I'm not perfect as far as making these videos. It's something that I've actually learned and uh, it was actually just a dare and a bet that I I couldn't make a, a YouTube channel, so 
basically that's how I started my YouTube, all right? So I'm still learning a lot about cameras and apertures and ISOs and lighting. I mean, it just, it's crazy because it's a whole new thing that I'm just not very good at. So I'm learning how to get better at it. But if you want to watch the old video on discus water and compare what I said then to now, or what even a little different, because I believe I was trying to do minerals back then and stuff, check out this video here.